Stop right there. Yeah, you. If you like all things entertainment, current events, or Hollywood, then look no further. Creator to Creators, hosted by director Mio Shabin of Horror Noir, interviews filmmakers and creatives from around the world. Join in on the fun, guest celebrities, and informative information to have as a creator. Hit subscribe and stay connected to Creator to Creators. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Creators to Creators today. Today we have a special guest. Hi, I'm Taylor Lyons. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome to the show. I mean, you've been on before. <laughs> yes, yes. With your husband. <laughs> but you're back solo and uh still you I mean you're just so talented uh for those that don't know this girl is just absolutely amazing also my friend my good friend so I'm a bit biased I think she's absolutely incredible um but uh you know I I guess how I I open the show every every like with every guest I'm, I'm always asking like why and how did you find yourself in this industry? Where did that come from? Well, um, I guess my when I was telling my parents I wanted to be an actor, they're like, why? And I was like, I, I couldn't place my finger on it. And my grandmother came over, like, she's just wanting to go into this acting stuff. And they're like, well, you raised her watching movies 24 seven. So no wonder she wants to be a part of it. So I think that probably had something to do with it you know monkey see monkey do but um I think it really I watched the movie child star the Shirley Temple story about her upbringing and it said that um she like it was the whole thing about making people smile and feel better about their life and everything and I think making people feel good not in a like a suck up way I don't know how to word it but like I guess uplifting people has always been kind of a thing that I've been really wanting to do like something that's something that makes me feel fulfilled if I can encourage somebody or make them feel better and that when they said people come to um, see you because you make them smile and I was like oh make them like that translates to making them feel making them um, happy, sad, go through all the emotions and stuff. And so I think for some reason that segment of the movie has stuck with me my entire life. And I was like, it was just some biopic, (laughs) but, um, yeah, I think that's kind of been the whole thing that kind of inspired me to start moving towards entertainment because Mm -hmm. it's like, you make people feel like happy and um encouraged or certain ways and then um as I I first started pursuing singing so I was doing a lot of um vocal competitions and stuff and then I got into plays and I asked my friend who I this probably wasn't the right person to ask (laughs) because we were constantly auditioning for the same stuff like she was a singer and I was like do you think I'm a better singer or actress you know as my peer when I was younger <laughs> she's like you're a better actress than you are a singer and I was like okay well I will shift my goals to that um so I was like okay um but then things started you know moving towards that and getting um more affirmative action signs and instances that were like this is the right field that you should be in right now and mm-hmm. everything so that's how I got here that's amazing that's cool that's cool so you know it's I find it very interesting how a lot of actors and their stories of like their other talents that that you just will never know about but what they're known for and you're like whoa they do this too it's like it's (laughs) absolutely it's absolutely incredible do you do you ever think you ever like kind of go back and you know try to sing something or make something in that kind of world creatively I mean, that'd be cool. I'm, I'm not like, no, but (laughs) I don't think, um, I don't know. I don't think I'd ever pursue it full-time overacting just because, you know, you have people like 
Adele and Ariana Grande and all the, like, I'm not putting an age limit on people, but they've, they've achieved such vocal skill and talent at such a young age. It's like, you have to have some crazy cool hook or some sort of big stunt in order to really stand out, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah. As far as vocalists go. And I mean, I guess it's like with everything, it's just meeting the right people in order to make you stand out. But there are people who are really established off their skill and stuff. But, you know, you have movies and things where they have their actors sing. And I, I'm definitely down for that. I yeah. As far as that. Going on, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, as far as going on, like uh, putting that as my first and foremost passion, um, not really so much, especially I had... Um, I damaged my vocal cords for a little while, like uh, when I was in school, because I, um, I had an eating disorder and all that stuff. And I could feel my throat like get acidy and I couldn't hit the same high notes anymore. I mean, I can hit them now, but it takes me a lot more warm up. It's been quite a few years since I recovered, you know? Oh, wow. So yeah. So I, I now I can hit a pretty lower octave but getting up to the really high impressive notes that's <laughs> yeah. takes some warming up and it, and it's something it's developing your instrument and craft when you're doing a any of these things like with acting from well it, working on my craft acting wise on a daily basis is something i find easier to do gotcha. than scheduling out uh, one to two hours for vocal improvement <laughs> right I I definitely I can't I, I yeah I can't imagine yeah. that for myself I'm poof <laughs> yeah more proud to you um <laughs> no I mean I acting is work too though I'm sure you know just that you know um but I, you know obviously you know you love what you do so that's why you do something um do you have you like you know I always like, I don't want to just talk about the good parts of acting, but also the parts that just the struggling parts, the parts that help, you know, the real situation, like the work that you had to put into getting those roles. Like, did you have to go out? Did you like audition? Did you put yourself out there? What were some things that you did to like, just, you know, get the job? Oh yeah, definitely constant submissions and stuff like that. Um, and just going out <laughs> you know um it, it, again it was really meeting like the right people I was in a school um where some of my classmates were interested in acting and they had parents um that were like yeah you should go over here to pursue this meanwhile my parents were like we do not want you <laughs> to be going out on these auditions you know not until you're finished with x y and z yeah and I was like well we'll see um <laughs> But I had a friend introduce me to his agent and that um, got me up on, I was doing like, you know, student films at like a local college and stuff. And that was getting experience in addition to like my training um, with the acting classes I was um, taking. But um, yeah, well, after getting that experience, a friend of mine introduced me to his agent and then she... Um, got me more real auditions gotcha. and all I had to do was just you know when when you have a representative like that you be available yeah. and have your materials updated with them um to make sure that they know what you look like but I wasn't getting a lot of I, I was confused because I was getting at, um auditions and stuff and then I wasn't getting bookings I, but I knew the people who were getting bookings and I was like they don't have as much experience with like training and stuff that I do uh -huh. and then I found out that um the casting director who is doing most of the local casting in the area um he thought I was fat so what? um that was something so I was like, oh, okay. And I had, I had lost a lot of weight from, I, I grew up very overweight mm -hmm. and then I lost a lot of weight um, once I hit um, high school years and onward. But um, I was like, oh, I was like, oh, okay. So I do not look how I think I look in my head. So how, how, um, do, how do you get like, that's the thing about acting. And that's why I, I commend actors. It's such a judgmental uh, 
Like there's yeah. a, there's that, there's that part of it, right. That exists. You, you put yourself out there and then there's all this criticism that, you know, I think that even, even on my side too, you know, even with, you know, your work is your baby. Right. And it's yeah. like, Oh God, I got to share this with the world. And uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, but criticism is, it's good. But then it's like, some people are overly criticizing to the point where everyone thinks they're a critic. Uh, how do you deal with that? Um, as an artist? Well, at first it was kind of like, oh, it hit me hard. I was yeah. like, oh my gosh. Oh, he didn't, the person who found that out was friends with said casting director. Gosh, and um, they told me in gentle terms, they didn't say it point blank. He said this, it was, um, you're not the type of person that he usually casts. Mm -hmm. and I was like, what does that mean? I'm I'm blonde. He's casting all these other blonde girls. Right, right. Like, what's the difference? And then I was like, and they said, like, you know, something about physicality and stuff. And I was like, oh, I'm much bigger than I must think I am. And it, I had to do like a real hard look at myself. And I was like, well, I'm going to be a lot more fit. And soon after, you know, it, it's, it's just one of those things. Yeah. that it's like, if you are a specific type, I was like in the middle, like I was normal, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I was like on the, I was thick, T-H-I-C-C. -C. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, but for the stuff that he was casting, he had like all casting directors have a different style of casting, you know, like, um, uh, some people like to cast more slender people. Some people like to cast more muscular, but they're all generally on the fit side, unless they are a specific type of character or person, or they're wanting to introduce body diversity, which is great. It's a great trend that's happening right now um, in the past couple of years. But oh, when wow. I was first starting out, it, that was not the case. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah. And it was just something that it was like, I thought I was where I needed to be. So right. I was like, well, this is more, at first it was kind of like, oh, that's disappointing. I'm really disappointed in myself and what, I, where I thought I was, you know, just realizing my world was not what I thought it was, if that makes any sense. It does. But yeah. So just, it, it motivated me to get healthier. So on a, fitness level it was great but it motivated me to actually reach my goals and I'm constantly striving to get better and stuff um like I said I grew up fat so it's kind of like a it's a constant battle right. um but yeah with that and this was after an eating disorder too this was after my wow. eating disorder and I I was looking back I'm pretty proud of myself for not having an episode you know right. like, you know delving back into those bad habits yeah so that was pretty cool just now realizing that um yeah but yeah I mean I just I, I think I just took it as motivation I mean like with every criticism at first it hits like oh, oh yeah that hurt yeah. you know and then it's like well you know what I'm going to get better so nobody can ever say that about me again or um you know it's like when it comes to critics, as far as like performance, that's, that's a totally different thing when yeah. it comes to you as like your body and stuff, it's like, um, and this is where it can get kind of manic to where, um, people become obsessed with their health, not their health, but with their body to where it becomes an unhealthy obsession. Right. Like, I want to get to this part. So nobody can ever say that again. Mm -hmm. If it's somebody who is in charge of your work, saying that like a casting director or whatever, it's kind of like, well, I need to listen because they're the one dishing out jobs, you know, um, a little bit, but so at the same time, take it with a grain of salt, that your worth is not your body and your talent is not based off your body. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Right. So I was like, okay. Um, but I did lose enough weight to be on his type of person that he cast and that subsequently opened the role I mean the door for more roles and stuff um of the type because if you're starting out playing you know um the other woman type things but it's usually a certain type um so it's like and those are what people usually start off with you know horror flick girl or other woman type things if you know yeah. what I mean. <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, so, and they're usually pretty cookie cutter molds yep. type thing. You see the same type of people starting out and yeah. So I was like, well, this is where I got to start from. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, no, it I, was interesting. <laughs> I feel that. And, you know, it's because, it, you know, I've, I've been in, 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 and God, I've had, it was rough. And I, and you, like you said, you have to kind of sit back and yeah, it hit, it hurts for a second, but you have to sit back, like reevaluate, like, okay. Um, and then sometimes they're completely wrong. Like I've, I've been, you know, casting rooms where it was like, we don't want your type. Like you just, you know, I'm just thinking, is it, is it my color, my skin? Really? Is it that what it is? Is you, you know, it, it, there's your mind just starts to wonder you just, you know, or, you know, I, I've, I've had it where it's like, but, but it, again, it's, when you put yourself out there for that, I mean, that's, that's what, that's, what's there, you know, it's that kind of world and we just yeah. have to keep going. Yeah. And that's, that's another thing, like, as I've gotten more experience and stuff, it's been something that I've come to the realization that it's not that there's something wrong with me yeah. and it's not that there's something wrong with the other person. It's the person casting it, the production company, the director, I mean, you know this being on the filmmaking side, they have a vision of what they want. And if you don't fit that vision, it's yeah. not that you're bad and it's not that they are small-minded. Mm -hmm. It's just that it just, they're going for a certain vibe or whatever. And you could look like their ex-girlfriend and they're like, no, you know, <laughs> it's like, I, I don't, I can't have that right now. And that seems petty, but it, it happens. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, there's so many different little nuances and it's not that you're not talented or anything like that. I mean, sometimes it is, you really need to work on your skills. But, <laughs> um, That's true. Yeah. But it's just, you know, it's, it's a million different reasons that go into casting and stuff. And that really reduced a lot of stress on my life. <laughs> and it made me um, less petty competitive. Like I'm, like I'm healthy competitive. Like I want to do more. It's like, Oh, I like that. How'd you like, you know, it's like, how can I better myself to get up on that level? Yeah. Um, as opposed to being, Oh, I got to keep it secret. Keep it safe. I don't want to tell anybody how I right. do anything, you know? <laughs> and it's like, right. um, yeah. So, uh, and that's a whole nother thing. Cause it's like helping people tends to bless you back. Um, that's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So Absolutely. it's like, like with, especially in the creative industries. Yeah. There's so many people that it's like you help them and they might not help you back. They might even be like, oh, uh, I did this by myself. And it's like, you didn't, but that's okay. Sure. I, that's fine. <laughs> um, but at the same time, they, they may never bless you back. Yeah. But because you did that, it's like karma points, you know, what go, you reap what you sow and good things come back to you. Um, and sure. you know, every facet of life, even if it feels like it's not happening. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then like, you know, and then there's people who are very, you know, extremely self-serving and you see that even though at first they start making gains, they hit like a wall and it's like, Whoa. And they talk about being lonely at the top and everything. And it's like, how you got there was not by helping other people and not by looking out for, you know, the people who helped you along the way. Now, this guy is pretty controversial now, but at the time he was well-respected. Um, I did uh, a thing with Kevin Spacey in a classroom type setting that was recorded, a masterclass. I watched um, it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. cool. That's so cool. Well, yeah, it was, it was very interesting. It was a very extremely educational experience. One of the most educational experiences I've had in my career. Um, because I just, you know, you're acting but at the same time you're being taught. It's a, like a filmed workshop of all these different actors and the same age group. And he's giving you feedback and stuff. And I realized, wow, I did not commit to the direction that he gave me. Mm -hmm. I was like, so from then on, I was like, I have to full on commit, you know, but that was one of those things. But one of his things, he, his mentor was Jack Lemon mm -hmm. and Jack Lemon always talked about send the elevator back down. It's like, you get up to a certain point and it's like, you help people along the way. 
you rise up a level, send the elevator back down, like reaching out an olive branch, opening a door for somebody that's not where you are, you know, and that will continue to elevate you, elevate them. And then the next thing, you know, you're like Adam Sandler and all his friends constantly making movies and creating content together, you know, stuff that you really love doing. And people like Adam Sandler's stuff because you can tell they have a joy creating it, you yes. know, and it's, yeah, it's not everybody's taste. And I erase cup of tea. My mom doesn't like it, but <laughs> You know, it's like he he is undeniably successful and he appeals to a crazy ton of people because everybody knows he's a nice guy and everybody knows that he helps out his friends and he's constantly using his friends in the movies like that. Um, and it's a, a symbiotic relationship that just garners joy and success that everybody can see and want to support. I love that yeah. about him and I love that's like the goal right to 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 yeah. be to be able to go to work and do what you love to do a with people that you love you know and then you know are gonna bring it and it's just that that family kind of aspect or uh that you want to have in in this industry um creating that family because you know like I, I, I met you. Uh, I mean, there's such a, there's so many amazing people in this business that you meet and you're like, man, if, if I can just get a team together, but you know, you know who your team, the people that are there for you when, exactly. you know what I mean? And, and that, that's definitely the ultimate, ultimate goal um, for sure. Um, yeah. Which leads me to my, my next question. Um, I think, Everyone loves we every, the, the sense of you know Hollywood and, and the whole like oh it's it's that you know it's magical and you get to be someone else but do you believe you don't want to act I mean acting is good you love it but the ultimate goal would you say is to be your own boss and being your own boss is in any industry really right yeah having multiple streams of income is the ultimate goal i think for everyone um uh you have so many different things that you want to do in your life how are you making those steps to making that a reality for yourself well somebody not yeah i heard somebody say it was probably bob proctor who recently passed this week oh, um, right. yes um but he said if time and money were no factor, what would you want to do? What would you be doing? What would you be exploring? And um, I was like, well, if I all of a sudden had like a billion dollars, I would want to create a movie that I liked and um, obviously that I would be in because I'm an actor um, <laughs> and, you know, something uh, like a movie that I, I liked and, um, you know, have experienced doing that. So during 2020, um, I had a chance to jump on as a producer for flight 704, which if you go to my social media, <laughs> check it out. That. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's been an experience that's been, that was something that I'm like, it's been extremely educational, eye-opening. I have so much more respect for behind the scenes people. I already had a lot of respect for them, mm. but I have so much more now um, for people who have been doing it and killing it consistently. I'm like, it is a lot of work doing the behind the scenes stuff. And it's like, whoa. Um, yeah. So that was one thing I started doing. And then NFTs came out. And I was like, I am <laughs> really curious about that. I recently got an iPad, which I used to, before, in conjunction with my desire to become a singer, I also wanted to be an artist. So I was doing all sorts of like art classes and stuff as well. Um, I was like, I can make my own album art or whatever, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um as I, I travel a lot, I'm not at my own home right now. I'm a gypsy. 
Um, but I, it's, it's hard to travel with art supplies, canvases and all that stuff and keep up on your skill. So I was recently gifted an iPad for Christmas. Oh, which was, nice. Yes. That was a very big blessing. Um, because it's like, it's like you're drawing and painting on paper, but it's all just confined into this little thing that you can take anywhere. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> so NFTs started like popping up everywhere. I'm like, what the heck's an NFT? Like a non-fungible token. I'm like, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> I'm like, it just looks like somebody opened up paint on Microsoft stuff, <laughs> threw a couple of lines and threw it on there. And that's really what some of them look like. And they sell for bank. But um, I was like, I want to try it. I want to see what it is. And yes. So um, that is something I have been exploring as an alternate <laughs> um, exploration of artistic expression. I and yes. and you're really good at it, by the way. You're really good at it. Not trying to like, I've seen some of your stuff. I was like, whoa. What? Oh, thanks. I wouldn't I mean, know where to begin in <laughs> NFT. Like, what, what do you, how do you do this? Well, so the first things that I started trying with, and they're posted on my OpenSea, but um, I was trying to do like portraits incorporating like some cryptocurrency um, design in there. But I, I immediately started posting them for sale. And the thing that I've realized from, I've, I've been doing a lot more research on how to, um, I guess, stand out and to be seen and to create. Um, meaningful content for things. Um, there's a lot of people, they take their photographers and artists and I'm like, this is a way that I'm able to um, do art and like put it up there and everything, you know, and have people see it and like, you know, it'd be kind of cool. And there's so many varying types of art that are like, again, like I said, there's scribble art, like literal scribbles that are being collected. And I'm like, that's interesting. I'm like, there's there's literally something for everybody. And there's so many different types. There's utilitarian entities, which means you purchase it and you either get a download or you purchase it and you unlock um, some sort of um, game piece. Um, I do have some friends. I don't remember what their NFT collection's called, mm. but they've created these skins for characters in this fantasy game that you can buy. They got licensed and an agreement with them so they when you buy their nft you can use it in a physical game and i'm like oh my gosh that's so wow. cool that's i don't code that's, awesome. that's not yeah i know right i'm like but that's not my skill set my skill set is art mm -hmm. and creative stuff so um when i started doing the first digital art like portrait type stuff i posted it and i was like awesome. Mm -hmm. And then nothing happened. And I was like, okay, I need to figure out how you can get seen. You can't just post and then somebody buys it. That's what my naive and experienced self thought, <laughs> you know? Um, it's, like, it's like YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. You post it and everybody's going to watch it. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. So right now I just, I've combined my, um, love for old movies. I grew up um, with going back to my grandma saying that um, my dad had movies raise us. I mean, he, he kind of really did because he was a cinephile and like my, our entire house could be like, there's just, you, you've been to my parents' house. There's like movies everywhere, you know, yes. from <laughs> It's like a Silent library of models. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's that was my childhood. And oh. uh, but we started off um, like, yeah, there were some cartoons there when we were like little, yeah. but we started off watching black and white television, like, you know, the original sitcom style of Lucy, the honeymooners yeah. and all that. And then we gradually graduated to color and like Little House on the Prairie. Oh we did God, not, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did not make it to TGIF, um, the 90s. Like I. I still haven't seen Full House, Boy <gasps> Meets World, or um, there was another one. Dawson's Family Talk? Creek? No. I have not seen that. And I haven't seen Friends at all. Um, so 
that, that section, I have not, I'm not super exposed to it. I've seen a lot of movies from there, but not a lot of television shows. Anything before 1990, I'm pretty semi-familiar with, you know, right. Facts of Life, The Rockford Files, um, Columbo, whatever. Columbo, um, yeah, that was, that was a show. <laughs> yeah. So I have a deep appreciation and love for, um, old movies like a lot of things that show on TCM Turner Classic Movies and so I've kind of um I was listening to Gary V Gary Vaynerchuk um he was talking about NFTs and the thing that always gets him which also gets a ton other people is Americana nostalgia collectibles mm. And one of the things that people collect more than anything else are trading cards, specifically sports trading cards. So I'm combining my love for old movies, old Hollywood with trading cards. So I'm making old Hollywood trading cards. So on the front, it's a kind of a pop art collage art of um, people like Hedy Lamarr and Myrna Loy, um, Hattie McDaniel. And like, you know, so many people that, uh, stood out and were collectible worthy, you know, Mm -hmm. um, that people that we still watch their movies today, like on TCM and, um, or you have the DVD of it or something like that, but like a lot of old, um, actors. So I, I, I make a art pop collage of them and then I give them a card number. Now they're not in any specific order. Oh, when I make them, they're given a number, you know, That's now William Powell is number one because I, I do love the Thin Man series. If oh, you yeah. have not. So yes. So right. So um, he was fresh in my mind. So he was the first one I made. So he's number one. And then Myrna Loy, who's his partner and all that. She's also a pretty inspiring person. Like she just seems classy all the way around looking up her life. Um, but she's number two. Anyways. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it's, um, the goal is to make at least 400 spanning from the silent movie era to Ooh. the eighties. Wow. Um, so that's, yeah, right now I have a list of 200, not even, I'm starting from like the thirties right now. I'll, I'm going thirties to fifties right there. So I have about 200, um, have almost a hundred made it's really time consuming sorry i'm going to way too much detail oh, this about is this, good. this but... is good i mean I, <laughs> I don't know anything about the nft world this is good oh this is good we all, well, all want to know <laughs> yeah i mean some people there's a lot of people they take their photographers and they upload photographs and stuff and then there's artists who have had digital art files on their computer and they're finally uploading them like there's there was this guy and um i heard about him in Africa he was he's in like a he has internet so I guess it's not a third world country but I knew he was struggling his story it was pretty cool he was struggling really hard he sold one nft and now he's taking care of his family you know oh exactly I'm like just from one piece of artwork in another country you know and then there's little kids that are um doing stuff I'm actually I'm trying to help my niece do that too she's really she's very talented at digital art and so she's been really interested in it and I'm like yeah let's do it and her parents are like okay you know <laughs> but so, so it's basically a, a, a I guess it's obviously you, you it's online it's this yeah. digital world that you create you create but then someone essentially buys your art right for right. whatever that price is yeah. And then it can increase over time. It's a lot like stocks. Okay. Um, gotcha. So it's like the price of your item is based off other people's opinion. Gotcha. Right thing. Gotcha. Um, there are, that's, that's, I'm, I'm fairly new to Twitter and the mm-hmm. NFT space, but that's Twitter seems to be the platform. I, I have a TikTok for it, a uh, Twitter for it. I'm posting on um, on Instagram um, for it. I'm not posting on Instagram as much as I should, but um, 
um, community. There's a lot of people there that are super supportive. There's a lot of really cool art. And I'm like, oh my gosh, is my stuff good enough? I'm like, there's room for everybody at the table. Have you, um, have you shared it on Facebook uh, community sites? Uh, are you part of have, communities on those NFT communities? I have not explored Facebook. Uh, that is a very good point. Mm, yes. Um, but yeah. So I will start looking there. Thank you for <laughs> that reminder. Um, yeah, I, but, I, I joined a, a community on Facebook uh, and I posted something. It was for women in film. I think I posted like it was reshared with the community of whoever's all in the group. You know, it's yeah. all those eyes are watching it. And then because it, the like mindedness, they just started sh- resharing it and just kind of trickled. And, yeah. You know, you're like, whoa, <laughs> that's cool. exactly. And it's just like some of my things that I have shared, like I'll get like a book good deal of like likes and stuff like that and I'm like okay that's cool so that's what I do and then I try to repeat it Ah. and I'm like well what was the thing so I'm just trying to I'm currently trying to figure out the whole social media presence with it because um I was listening to another girl who had a really big following for her digital art but a lot of her followers were not interested in Mm -hmm. the nft space so she launched a collection and only two out of the 40 pieces that she made sold. Wow. And yeah, she said, if her quote was, if an NFT launched in the woods and nobody was there to see it, did it actually happen? And that was what my problem was with my first initial round. I, I wasn't that. putting it anywhere. I was like, uh, I made this here friends look at that (laughs) right you know um so now it's like creating a community because that's one of the things people like the with the nft community a lot of the um projects as they're called um they are based off some sort of uh community and familiarity and the one that i really identify with is the film community Mm -hmm. obviously um and classic film old hollywood that's like i love it So um, being able to combine those two is something that one, I really enjoy doing. um, And two, I feel like that's the, I've I've already been getting likes on OpenSea, which means people are sharing, like saving it for when it's available. So I'm like, that's cool. I'm not going to be posting them until like, I'm not going to be posting them for sale until I have at least a hundred maiden up there but like I said it's a it's pretty time consuming I'll I'll show you please please um it's so it's so people who don't have an iPad or 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 that device they can use it on they can do it on the computer at home too yeah you can do it on your computer you can do it on your phone um now I can't I don't know why I have other friends that make um NFTs and they can upload straight from their phone but for some reason I can't upload from my phone or my other mobile devices, I have to upload everything on my computer. I do not know why. Hmm. Um, it's probably a learning curve, but okay. So here are my NFT trading cards. Nice. Very yeah. nice. So I do the pop art stuff and, um, sorry. <laughs> also good. <laughs> oh, thanks. Okay. We'll just go with William Powell. Cause I love the Thin Man series. Yes. Um, so I'll make it big. But so it's like, it's the collage art. Oh, cool. Really wow. Right there. And then it flips over like a trading card oh. and it has all his um, stats and stuff. So that has been the most time consuming part. Right. Compiling all the stats and then filling all the cards out, like making the front art collage because on all the pieces. So it's like a collage of their. Um, They're kind of like the work. Yeah, stuff that they're known for, quotes and pieces of script and stuff. Nice. Um, and then everything has their signature on it and um, a quote from their life wow. and the philosophy on life as well. So that that's what the art piece is like. And then it flips over to be a trading card. So um, that's my collection. It's from my love of old Hollywood. And <laughs> um, yeah, but like people like Nat and Cole, he was primarily known for his music. I'm I'm doing actors um, because I'm an actor, but um, people like Nat King Cole or Hedy Lamarr, uh, Nat King Cole was obviously a singer. So I have sheet music on there from the some of the songs that he's 
um, written, you right. know, and stuff like that. Um, and Hedy Lamar, she was also an inventor. So I have some of the blueprints of some of the things that um, she created. Awesome. Um, well, and then like, you know, people who are more known for their stage presence some playbills and things like that. So trying to make everything as unique and diversified for each specific talent, what they were known for. 